Hi, I'm Natasha Malazzo and you're watching Turning the Verge. Today with us is artist Glenn Arthur. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you very much. How are you going? I'm going well. How are you? Very good. I'm actually very excited to interview you because I think that you're amazing. Aww. I really love your work. Thank you. So, tell me, when did you start? When did you start painting? Uh, painting uh, just a few years ago. Uh, 2007 was when I picked up my first paintbrush that was actually shoved into my hands. Uh, shoved. <laughs> shoved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> by, a, by a very close friend of mine. She, uh, she pretty much told me that I had to do it and had no other choice. So I, I tried it and, and it stuck. <laughs> so it stuck. So have you had any experience in painting previously to no. being shoved into it? No, not at all. Uh, just drawing and kind of doodling and just doing my own thing. Um, didn't have any schooling or anything like that. Wow, so you just... didn't go to Cal State Fullerton? Or... No, unfortunately, I, I didn't do the school thing. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've never really been the, the greatest student, so I figured it was probably a better idea for me to try it myself. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, when you were younger, did you have any hidden talents? As in, were you an artist? Um, well, I always doodled, uh, but I grew up uh, in a theater a lot. So my mm -hmm. sister, my older sister and I were always on stage. We were total little hams. My mother wanted us to be big performers, and so that's what <laughs> so we was did. Was she a stage mom? Uh, not so bad as some stage moms that I've seen, but she was definitely a proud mom. Mm -hmm. so. Very good. <laughs> Is she very proud of you now? Oh, doing absolutely. What you're doing? Absolutely. Okay, so you have a couple of paintings or series coming out soon. Uh, uh, you've got some shows I happening. I do have shows happening. Um, there are two big shows that I'm really looking forward mm -hmm. to. Uh, one of them is my very first solo show, actually. At awesome. The solo. Everybody solo. Yes. Clap. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it is at the Rothic Art House in Anaheim, mm -hmm. uh, which is an amazing new gallery that just opened up last year. And Great. I love it so much. Uh, that show will be opening May 15th, 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very excited about that one. Also, uh, right after that in July, I'm not sure of the exact date yet, but I'm doing a show, a group show with a Long Beach-based art magazine called Guardians of Bravery. So Very that good. one should be pretty cool as well. Awesome. So is there anywhere people can check out your artwork? Currently, most of it is online. Mm -hmm. um, my personal website is under construction. It's almost ready. But uh, as far as anywhere else you can see it, on, I'm on all the basic networking sites, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, slash Glenn Arthur Art. Great. Well, I was checking out your MySpace. And I have to ask about the series that you have up on there at the moment. Tell me all. I am very, very interested to know how the names Ghost and Banshee came along. Uh, the Ghost and the Banshee, wow. I feel like I've been working with them for my entire life, even though <laughs> they've uh, only come into my paintings since last year. Um, the characters came about quite by accident, actually. The, it all started with the, the white-haired woman, who mm -hmm. is the ghost. Um, I decided in 2008, after I had done a couple of shows here and there, that I really wanted to just hole up and create for myself to kind of figure out my own style, how I wanted to make artwork, what I wanted to show with my artwork and everything. And she kind of came about that way. As I would just work more and more in my sketchbook and kind of making new pieces and everything, it always seemed to come back to that one specific character. Mm -hmm. Her same look, her same um, just emotions, everything. It's, it had a lot of the same just instances happening over and over again, so I stuck with it. Uh, to my surprise and delight, it caught on very quickly uh, through the online community. Mm -hmm. And actually, my online friends named her the ghost because she has such an ethereal quality about her with the white flowing hair and her light eyes and tears. Oh, she's and very beautiful. Oh, thanks. So, do you um, think she's an element of yourself? You know, the beauty? And uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm as beautiful as she is, but I definitely like to think that she is. She is somewhat of me coming out into her when it comes to expressing emotion and trying to just convey that it's, it's healing to express emotion and mm -hmm. to, to understand your feelings, uh, especially growing up, you know, as, as any boy growing up is always usually told, don't show your emotions, it's mm -hmm. a sign of weakness, uh, which I don't agree with. And um, 
I'm very thankful to have my artwork as an emotional outlet to let it out. So that was how I did it through her character. So when you say people told you that it's not good to shed emotion as a young man, mm -hmm. was that your parents or just society or where did you find a that? A little that of both. Influence? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it definitely came from growing up in an extremely conservative household. Needless. How conservative is conservative? Uh, very, very conservative, right? White ring of white ring, <laughs> right wing, uh, and religious and everything. It's Catholic. Just, uh, Christian. Christian. And Catholic as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. They both kind of had played, had influential roles on my life. But, um, so yeah, it did, it did come from family. It came from society as well. Just, I think, in our society in general, a lot of people are told, don't show your emotions. It means you're weak or it means you're crazy or something mm -hmm. like that. And everyone's after this eternal, like, happy pill. You just take it and all of a sudden, no more tears. Yeah, but, the, uh, uh, antidepressant, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. But uh, it's, it is healing. And it is, there is uh, some, a, a strength that comes from learning how to cry and learning how to show that emotion, um, which is why I think an, a creative outlet is so important. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people really caught on to my work was because those who don't have that creative outlet were experiencing it through my own work, but something tangible that they could relate their own emotion to, which blew my mind, first of all, and just was such an honor, and I was so absolutely flattered. Um, but as I continued with that character, Ghost, I, I decided after the year 2008, um, I didn't do any shows, and I just created for myself, felt like I finally found my own style. I felt like she needed... A counterpart, a friend, mm -hmm. so to speak, or or a, a, another half of her, another side of her that people the hadn't yin really and the seen. Yang. The yin and the yang, exactly, which is where the banshee came about. Um, mm -hmm. And again, she was also kind of named by my my online followers. Uh, so, which do you think your followers are as expressive as you are? Like, do you think that they express themselves because they see your paintings? Um, I'd like to think so. <laughs> I think a lot of them are actually. Um, a lot of people write to me about my paintings and how they feel like it's it's an extension of themselves. They mm -hmm. can really see themselves in my painting, especially with the new series. For more information or how to become a guest on the show, contact us at www.turningtheverge.com or follow us on our Facebook and Twitter forward slash turningtheverge.